Welcome to this new video. So we are still in section 1.3 and in this video we are going to cover the first part of subsection 1.3.2 about recurrence and transients. So we are going to classify states into uh, two types. So let us start with a definition. So if you have a homogeneous Markov chain on a state uh, space S, we set, so for each state I in S, we denote by T sub I the smallest integer N bigger or equal than one for which X of N equal I, if this is not empty. If this is empty, we set naturally ti to be plus infinity. So ti is a random variable taking, taking values in n star union infinity. And we call this uh, random variable the time of first return to state i. Le temps de premier retour à l'état i. So let us, before continuing, uh, observe three things. So what is the event ti equal n? If ti equal n, it means that x1 is different from i. If n, so suppose that n is bigger or equal than 2. Okay. So it means that x1 is different from i, x2 different from i, xn different from i, and xn equal i. Okay, so this is, so if you follow uh, the evolution of the system, we could start with state i, but the next time it will be different up to the nth, at the nth step, we reach the state i. If n equal 1, what does it mean that the i equal 1? It means that if I start with i, the next time I will be in i. Okay? And usually we are interested in the conditional probability that ti equal n given that x0 equal i. Okay? So when, when the, the time of first return is 1, then this means that x1 equal i. So this is the first observation. Second observation, what does it mean that ti is infinity? It means that this set is not empty. So there exists at least one n such that xn equal i. So this event can be written as the union of, X, of the events xn equal i. And or, if you like, it's the disjoint union of the events ti equal n for some integer n. Okay, so we are in this case here. And if I take the complementary event, because ti is either finite or plus infinity, so the complement of this the complement of the union is the intersection of the complement, so it's the intersection of all events x and different from i. And if I take the complement of this union, I get the intersection. So the Morgan's law. Okay. Now I will give it another definition, and then I will give an extensive example. So let f i i denote the probability that starting from state i, the process will ever re-enter state i. Then, what is FII? It's exactly the probability that TI is finite. So, we are not in the second case. Okay? Or, if you like, it's 1 minus the probability, the conditional probability, of course, because you are st starting from in state I. So, these two events are complementary. Okay? Because TI is either finite or infinity. Okay? And now, so, of course, we already observed that this event is the union, is the disjoint union of the events ti equal n. And therefore, by disjointness, I can write this as a summation, okay, because these events are disjoint. Okay, and now we say that state i is recurrent if fii is 1, which means that with probability 1, the system will revisit uh, the state i another time. And if not, we say that it's recurrent. So there is a positive probability that uh, the system will never return to state i again. 
So saying that FII is less than one or state I is transient, transitoire, transient. So saying that FII is less than one is equivalent to saying that P of TI equal plus infinity given that X zero equal I is positive. So same thing. Okay, so there's a positive probability of leaving the state and never going back to it. But now, let us illustrate these concepts on a simple uh, problem. So we have a Markov chain on the state 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the transition matrix is given by this. Now, the transition matrix, if you look at this, you cannot really analyze what's happening. So you have to draw the transition graph to understand better what is happening here. So if you look at the transition graph, you will see, I hope, that there are two communication classes. 0, 1 is a class, and 2, 3, 4 is another class. And they don't communicate. So there's a one-way um, uh, arrow from this class to this class. So as you observe, if, if you start, for example, from state 0, we can, for some time, uh, remain in the class 0, 1. So one possible uh, path would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. But ultimately, we will leave the class 0, 1 and remain in the class 2, 3, 4. So it should be clear for, for you that the class, all the elements in the class 0, 1 are transient. Because once we leave them, there's a probability, the positive probability of leaving the state one, for example, and never going back. But once we reach the class two, three, four, we will remain there forever. Okay, so state zero and one intuitively are uh, transient, and states two, three, four are recurrent. Okay. But I want to illustrate the concepts of this TI and so on. So I will prove by going back to the definition that state zero is uh, transient, state one is transient, and the others, the other states are recurrent. Okay. And we, sh we shall see later that actually the property of being recurrent or transient is a class property. So if in one class one state is recurrent, all the other states in the same class will be the same of the same type. Okay. But let us illustrate our concepts on so step by step. So let us consider first state zero. Okay. If we look at the event x1 equal one and x2 equal two, so what does it mean actually? It means that uh, okay, x zero could be one or zero doesn't matter. But the next state, the next step, I will be in two. If the next step I will be in two, I will never go back. So the this event, if this event happens, that the, the time of first return to state zero is plus infinity. Okay? So the probability of this event, the conditional probability starting from zero, this is what you are interested in actually, is bigger than this probability. And now we know how to compute that actually, uh, because this is by what we already said. So this is just the product of two. Pro this is the probability of the past 0, 1, 2. Okay, so it's just we multiply. We already proved this. And so it's P0, 1 times P1, 2. And by the numbers given, P0, 1 is 1 half and P1, 2 is 1 over 4. So this is 1 over 8 and this is something positive. So the probability of this event is strictly positive. So the complementary prob the, the probability of the complement event that I denote by F00 is strictly less than one. So state zero is transient. State one, of course, we later we are not obliged to do this at every time. If I give you an exercise like this, but uh, because since zero and one communicate. We'll see you later that state state zero is also state one is also transient. But let us prove it directly. So, what is the the event x one equal two? If if x one equal two, so the system at at time one is two, then it will never go back to state one. Right. So go back to the figure. If we are here at time n equal one, then there's there's a zero probability actually to come back to 
state one actually, right? Because it's a one way. And therefore, the probability that T1 is plus infinity, given that x0 equal 1, right? This is, as you observe, this is, we observe that this event is equal to this event, okay? But this event, so the intersection of all xn different from 1 contains x1 equal to. So the probability or the conditional probability of the intersection of all xn different from 1 is bigger or equal than the conditional probability that x1 equal to. And this is just the transition probability from 1 to 2, which is 1 over 4. So once again, we see that f11 is strictly less than 1, and so state 1 is also transient. Okay. State 2, if T2 is plus infinity, so we never go back to state 2, it means that if you look at the graph, if we never go back to 2, then what does it mean? It means that the system will wander, will be bouncing from state 3 and 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4. We, we never go back. So, So this event is contained in the event x1 equal 3, x2 equal 4. So this is the path 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, etc. up to 2n plus 1. And therefore, the conditional probability of this event is less than the conditional probability of the event starting from state 2. But I can compute actually this the probability of this path, as we learned in section 1.1. This is just the product of the transition probability. So from 2 to 3, P to 3, and then, so, yeah, from 2 to 3, then 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, 3. So, so you will convince yourselves that, so I have to multiply P3, 4 times P4, 3, N times, because I have 2N plus 1 here. And if you compute these probabilities, you will find 1 over 2 to the N. And this tends to zero at, as n tends to infinity. So therefore, the probability that T2 is plus infinity is zero. So necessarily, T2 is finite uh, starting from two. So this means that state two is recurrent by going back to the definition. Okay, and I can do a similar discussion for state three. Okay, now consider the event T3 equal two which means that uh, the time of first so the time of first return uh, to state three is in two steps so let us go back so keep in mind all is the figure so what is the probability is that starting from three we will go back to three in two steps if you look at this this is the sure event because if you are in three then we have two possibilities. Either we go to two, and then we necessarily go back the next step to one, so two steps, or we move to four, and then we necessarily go back to three. So the probability that T2 equal three is one, actually. And this is a consequence of the total probability formula, if you like. But it's, it's better to understand it on the figure, actually. So for small systems, a graphic, uh, graphical analysis is possible. And I encourage you to do that. So what we proved is that the condition probability that stating from three uh, from state three will go back in exactly two steps is one, and therefore the probability that t three is finite starting from state three is which is bigger actually than this probability is also equal to one because it's it's between one and one. So this is the proof that state three is recurrent. Now for state four. Uh, what is the probability? So let us go back to the figure. If we start from state four, so what are the and how many and how many may I will return to state four? But there are many possibilities. So I can do four three four, or or four three two three four. Okay, so this completes the list actually. So so either I go back. I return to state four in two steps, or in four steps, or in six steps. There are no other possibilities. Okay, so the first event is four three four, as I said. The second event is four three two three four, and so on. And I can compute exactly the probability of these paths. 
okay? So <coughs> if I start from four, so P43 is one times P34 is one half. So this is the probability of the first path. Second path, P431, P32, uh, one half, uh, P231, and P34, one half. So the first term is one half, the second term is one half times one half, and so on. And if I do the summation, I will find one. So this means by going back to the definition that state four is a record. Now, you are not obliged to do uh, these things every time. It's enough to, to prove that state zero is, for example, is transient and state two is recurrent. And then the same is true for all the elements in the same class. So I have two classes. Okay, but you didn't prove that yet. I just wanted to illustrate the concepts of these uh, first return times. Okay, now I will end with the result about the number of visits that the system visits state i after time zero. Okay, so we start with one. Okay, if for a state i, let an i be the number of visits of state i after time zero. So how to compute the an i? It's an integer actually could be plus infinity, okay? And you shall see this case now. So, okay, for each n, we, we look if xn equal i. If yes, then you add one to start with zero, if you like. And then each time xn visit, the system visits i, I add one. So this will give me the number, the total number of visits of state i. So this is the characteristic function of the event xn equal i. So it's just zero or one. If this is true, I put one, I add one each time. If not, if not, I add zero. Of course, if if Xn never visits I, then we put capital N I is zero, naturally. So the sum could be zero. And now the event that state I is visited at least once means that the time of first return is finite. Okay, because I visited at least one. So these two events are equal. And now the first result states that the mathematical expectation, the conditional mathematical expectation of this random variable, starting from state uh, i initially, is the sum of these probabilities. Pii to the n is what is actually the is the diagonal of the matrix P to the n. Okay, so I sum all these diagonal elements starting from one. And this will be a useful criterion for us to detect transients and recurrence. Okay, this is not difficult actually, just go back to the definition. So the an I write an I as go back to the definition of an I, it's the sum of these characteristic functions, but I condition on x0 equal i. Now the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectation, as you know. And this is a consequence of um, the monotone convergence theorem because the, the expectation is just an integral and I'm summing something positive. So I can interchange the sum and the expectation. Okay, so sum and integral. So same thing. Okay, because these are positive quantities. And what is the mathematical expectation of the characteristic function? It's just actually the probability of the event xn equal i, okay, by definition. But it's all all is conditional, and this is precisely pii to the n, it's the nth transition probability from state i to itself after n steps, okay. So later we shall go back to the series and study its conversion. So it could be divergent, be convergent, and according to convergence or divergence we may say something about recurrence or transience of the state. Okay, so I will stop here in this video and I will continue uh, next week uh, with part two of this subsection. Okay, so thank you for attention and study well.